This video explains how to calculate the mean by group and add this group mean as a new column to a data frame using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right and we can print this data frame to the console by using line four of the code. And after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that our data frame contains six rows and the two columns value and group, whereby the group column shows three different groups, A, B, and C, and the value column contains different numbers. Now, if we want to calculate the average by group using the basic installation of the R programming language, we can use the AVE function, as you can see in lines six to eight of the code. So in line six of the code, I'm first duplicating our data frame because I also want to keep an original version of our data frame. So after running this line of code, a new data set called data new one is appearing at the top right. And then in line seven of the code, I am applying the AVE function and within the AVE function, I'm specifying our value column as well as our group column. And then I'm storing the output of the AVE function in a new data frame column that I'm calling group mean. So after running line seven of the code, our data frame is updated, as you can see by printing the data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console. So after running line eight of the code, you can see that our new data frame contains the same columns as our input data frame, value and group. However, this time we have added a third column which contains the group means. So for instance, the mean of the group A in the value column is 2.5. So in this first example, I have explained how to use base R for this task. However, it's also possible to calculate the group means using the dplyr package. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 10 of the code. So as a first step, we need to install and load the dplyr package, as you can see in lines 10 and 11. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code. And then in the next step, I'm applying the group by function to our group column and the mutate function in combination with the mean function to our value column. And I'm creating a new column in our data set that I'm calling group mean. So the output will be similar compared to the first example. And then I'm also using the s.data.frame function to keep the data frame class. However, you can also remove this line of code to convert the output data set into the tibble class. So after running lines 13 to 16 of the code, another data set called data new2 is created and we can print the content of this data frame at the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 17 of the code. And then you can see that the output is exactly the same as in the first example. However, this time we have used the functions of the dplyr package. Now I want to show you another alternative, which is based on the data table package. And this third example starts in line 19 of the code. So as a first step, we need to install and load the data table package, as you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 20. And then in line 22, I'm duplicating our data set because I want to keep an original version of our data set as well. So after running this line of code, the new data frame data new three is created. And then in line 23 of the code, I'm using the set DT function in combination with the mean function to create a new group mean column. So after running line 23 of the code, our data set is updated. And this is an optional step. I'm also converting the output of the data table package to the data frame class because after running line 23, our data set is converted to a data table. So after running line 24 of the code, our data set is a data frame and we can see the final output by printing our data frame to the RStudio console by running line 25 of the code. And then you can see that the output is once again the same as in the previous examples. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. 
In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I am explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.